What's going on everybody? It's Pelfrey. <clears throat> and I've noticed on um, a couple forums that I get on that uh, there's been some topics discussed about uh, people losing power. Um, and I know that uh, it's July, so you know, really winter will be here sooner rather than later. Um, I know Fish Effects just went through a, a 23 or 24 hour power outage. And uh, Mike Lemming asked me to discuss what I'm using on my system uh, to keep everything running. So before I go any further, um, Fish of Hex, he used a generator and this device and a generator are not the same. Uh, a generator is intended to keep equipment running for a prolonged period of time, whereas this battery backup is intended to keep equipment running um, either in a server room long enough that the generator can be turned on and take over the load or if there's no generator present uh, in like a server room these battery backups are intended to be used so that you can shut down everything appropriately now with that being said I'm using this on my system um, and I'm using the battery backup side to run the MJ1200 which is my return pump in my all-in-one 120 gallon and my heater these are the only two objects that I'm running so the heater is 50-50. Uh, um, in the summer months, probably not really that big of a deal. Uh, in the winter months, whenever it could get pretty cold in here, if I were to lose power in the winter time, the heater's a big deal. But the MJ1200 is gonna pull less current than the heater. Uh, I don't know the specific numbers to it, but um, in my brain, I feel like the heater would pull more current, which in turn will suck more battery power than the MJ1200. So. With that being said, um, if you suspect at all you're gonna go through a long power outage, I would go out and buy a generator. A couple hundred dollars is gonna save you uh, possibly a couple thousand dollars worth of livestock. So keep that in mind. These are not intended to run for a very long time, um, but this is all gonna depend on what you have plugged into it. So I could run my MP10 off of it, uh, and I, again, I don't know the numbers, but I feel like the MP10 is going to pull more current um, than the MJ1200. So I feel safer running the MJ1200 versus the MP10. So taking a look at the battery backup, this is how it sets 24-7. Uh, uh, actually, right here, there's a display, and I guess I should have started this video off. This is a AP, an APC Pro 1300. Um, there's all kinds of battery backups. I think this one's like $200. I'm running one of these on my TV and my direct TV box. Um, the direct TV box is power hungry. The reason why I'm running one is for multiple reasons. If there's a surge in power, um, more times than not, it's not going to fry my TV and my direct TV box because it's going to be running on battery power. But if we have a power blip, um, my direct TV box is not going to shut down and then go through its five minute restart phase. So if it's, a, if, if, if it's storming here uh, and the power goes out for one second, uh, my satellite box is gonna stay up and running. So I don't have to worry about it rebooting and then taking five minutes to come back up. Um, on top here we have, this is an alarm button and then we have a power button and a display button. So if I press and hold this power button, it is gonna shut everything off that is connected to this battery backup. Uh, the alarm button is going to be used for um, if the power goes out and the, the, the battery backup kicks on, this is gonna start sounding an alarm. Uh, and then the display, we leave it, I leave it blank because it's behind uh, a couch and there's an end table actually situated here. I had to move to do this video. Um, and, and whenever you're sitting here, and there's no other lights on it's just kind of annoying i mean you can't it's not the brightest thing in the world but it, i can still see it a little bit so anyway whenever you turn this on the display on we get a couple things we get this bottom reading which is the input voltage um, here you can see that the alarm is active so you can either deactivate the alarm at this point there would be no audible sounds if the battery backup kicks on you can enable it and up here we have online this is the indicator telling me that the batteries inside the battery backup are fully charged um, I don't know the lifespan of these things it's a couple years anyway 
uh, especially if it's not going to run on battery backup very long. So if you don't have any power problems, um, the battery should be good for a couple of years. It is worth mentioning that you probably do want to pay attention to this. Uh, and if it starts decreasing at all, you probably want to replace the battery. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that if you need to replace the battery, you're probably better off replacing the whole unit versus just buying another battery. It's probably cheaper in the long run just to replace the whole unit. So the next bar is the load button. So you can see it at the moment, I have the minimum load plugged into the battery backup. So the more uh, that you plug into the battery backup, the, the more load that's going to be on it. And the more load that you have, the shorter duration that you have on the battery backup itself. So at the very moment, I don't know what the exact number is. I'll unplug it here in a few minutes. Um, it'll run longer. It's probably run its longest with this load versus if it was all the way full. If this was all the way full, you're going to lose a lot of run time. All right, taking a look at the back of the battery backup, you're going to notice that there's multiple outlets. Um, the outlets on this side will run on battery power, and the outlets on this side are going to be surge protector only. So on the surge protector only side, I have my Kessel, uh, the light, I have the spectral controller, and then I have the um, surge protector that I have uh, inside my cabinet. So these are surge protector only. And the reason why I don't have these two plugged in, the Kessel controller and the Kessel light into the surge protector in my cabinet is because um, I don't need to be able to turn these items on and off on their own. Um, this gray cord actually goes to a surge protector with switches so that you can manipulate each cord uh, or each device and the light runs on a timer. I don't need to manipulate when it comes on and off. So I have it plugged up back here. I have the outlets back here. I don't want to use this real estate um, in the cabinet. Now granted, I'm not using a whole lot of equipment here. So, you know, this is how I had it set up when I was running the cube. And whenever I was running the cube, I had more power outlets. So this is how I've, I've kept it. So here we have the return pump and the heater. And on a side note, some of these cords were labeled whenever I had the cube set up. So I would highly suggest you labeling um, any of your power cords only because it can get super confusing really quick. And then the second reason being is, of course, I know that this is a return pump, but if for whatever reason, if I'm not home and my wife calls and says, you know, something's going on, um, I don't know how to do this, this or this. Um, this one's not labeled, so if I said, you need to unplug the uh, return pump, she's not gonna have a clue which one it is. So not only is this beneficial for us that work on the tank, but it could be beneficial for um, our spouses or anybody else to manipulate if there's a problem. So anyway, I have five plugs on the battery backup side, um, and you can actually plug a surge protector in here and add more to it. Um, but once again, you're going to have to pay attention to the load that is on the battery backup and the more load that you have, the, um, the less time the battery backup is going to run. So it's important to pay attention and it's hard to see. You can see where my finger is right now, but this says battery backup. So this whole side is battery backup. Um, these two are master battery backup power or, uh, switches. So. Uh, they're relatively easy to plug in and set up. This is the actual battery inside of the battery backup. Whenever you get one of these brand new in the box, these things are actually flipped around so that the battery is not plugged in. So <clears throat> what you're going to need to do is before you even plug this into the wall, you need to open up this. There's a little slide that opens up here and inside of this cabinet i can't get it correctly but inside of this cabinet is the actual battery and whenever you open this up this green tape is going to be red and all you need to do is take slide this out flip it around until you have the green side facing up slide it back in and now the battery backup's good otherwise if you don't flip this battery around and um, you have objects plugged into the battery backup part of the uh, UPS, 
then it's not going to run on battery power because the batteries are not plugged in number one and then secondly they're not going to be charged but so take into consideration if you buy any any battery backup that i know of i'm a brand of the ap uh, a fan of the apc brand but if you buy one of these be sure to flip these batteries around so pay attention to the instructions whenever you open up and read them all right i'm going to go ahead and unplug the battery backup so that we can hear the audible noise that it'll make and see what the runtime will be So now you can hear it is beeping at me, letting me know that it is running on battery backup. Uh, my Kessel light shut off because it is not running on battery backup. My return pump and my heater are both still running. A fan kicked on. I don't know if you can hear it, but a fan kicked on. And at the very moment, uh, it is telling me that I have an estimated 48 minutes of runtime on the battery backup so if power is not restored within 48 minutes that's a plus or minus probably five or ten minutes then i'm going to be out of luck i don't own a generator and i'm not going to be able to power anything on my system period so i would highly suggest uh if you're in an area that it's it's possible that you're going to go more than an hour R really to be honest with you, probably more than like 10 or 15 minutes, um, I would get a generator. Now, I wouldn't plug a generator in if you've lost power for an hour or two, but if you're looking at a couple of hours, I would personally would turn a generator on. Um, I have such a small system that I'm not gonna get a generator at this point, but you have to think about it. You know, a generator is gonna cost you a couple hundred dollars and uh, you could have a couple thousand dollars worth of livestock inside of your tank and you don't want to lose that um, So the bad thing about a generator is storing it, but whenever it comes to saving money uh, You can't go wrong there So we can see that was probably actually about a minute uh, or more uh, And now we're down to 47 minutes. So it's going to continue beeping at me until the power has been restored um, I'm gonna go ahead and plug the battery back up back into the wall the audible will stop and it'll continue uh, it'll actually switch back and run off power versus the battery so now that the audible stopped I don't know if you could hear the clicking but um, Whenever it clicked, it went back to um, the outlet power versus the battery power. All right, now that we're in front of the tank, um, you can see down here is my surge protector. You can see the MP10 lit up. Of course, the tank's lit up and you can see the light. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the battery back up again. You're gonna see this cabinet, everything in this cabinet go dark. Uh, and then it's gonna be Probably, I don't know if we'll see the water move or not, but what you're gonna to need to pay attention to is over on this side, this water level is not going to drop, which means that my pump is still running. So again, you can hear the um, battery backup running. The water level to the right did not drop and you can see the water moving a little bit. Uh, it's not moving at all, nearly as much as it was because the MP10 is not running. And you can see the cabinet is not lit up anymore. So the only thing that is being powered by the battery backup currently is the MJ1200 over here and the heater in the back of the tank. So uh, it's important to, to take into consideration that if you have uh, a bigger pump that's going to pull more current the runtime is going to reduce so you know if you have let's say uh, uh, like a fluval sp4 or 6 or whatever uh, you might get half of the 48 minute runtime that I'm getting maybe it depends um, you would really have to crunch the numbers and see what um, what kind of amperage uh, I guess that's the correct term the 
equipment pulls versus what the battery backup will support. And somewhat informative. Um, I don't know if it answers all of your questions, but if you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask them. Uh, once again, this a battery backup is not necessarily or not really intended to run things for a long period of time. They're just there to really, really prevent surges uh, and give you a couple extra minutes to figure out what your next plan is. So if I had a generator, uh, let's just say that this is it's January and we have a bad ice storm. If, um, if I have a generator uh, in the building uh, sitting standby and our power goes out, I know that right now I have 50 minutes to figure out what I need to do next. Um, so really in that time span, I would probably just let it slide and see what happens until my battery backup dies. And then at that point, I would reevaluate what I need to do. Um, so just a disclaimer, uh, battery backups are by no means meant to power things for a long period of time. Now I know that Ecotech and there's a couple other companies that make battery backups that will power your pumps. Um, I don't know the runtime of them because I don't have any of them. Um, in my eyes, it's probably better and cheaper for me to buy an APC backup than it is a specific Ecotech pump uh, or backup, whatever. But hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, if you have any comments, uh, concerns, questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Hey Mike, uh, I hope this has answered some of your questions. I know you live up north, so uh, I would probably, in my personal opinion, I would probably go for a generator. Uh, I, well, I would probably have one in the event of a long power outage. In my opinion, you can never go wrong with a battery backup. I think that everybody should have a battery backup, but that's my opinion. Uh, once again, the one that I bought, I think was like $199 but it gives me that peace of mind. I think a couple of weeks ago, we lost power uh, somewhere around in the neighborhood. Um, but whenever I got home, the battery was fully charged. So I don't know that we, at this, my house, if we lost power, but I know people in our area that had lost power. So, you know, I was at work. I really didn't, I don't have a, any way of getting a notification on this battery backup, uh, but it gives me a peace of mind and it lets me sleep a little bit better at night. So. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, if you're watching this from the web, uh, below my, my video, there's a gear button. You can click that gear button, check mark uh, notifications, and you'll be notified via email every time I put a video up. If you're watching this from the iPhone app, there's a bell. You can click the bell. You can click notify me. You'll get an email every time I put a video up. Uh, and uh, stay tuned for the next one.